Good morning and thanks for staying with us. We're Paragon. We're joined by Chris Haverkamp this morning. And Chris, thanks for joining us this morning. Uh, we're in the middle of spring. We've got uh, planters in the field. Um, we still may be holding on to some old crop from last year. Right. And, and if you are, if you are one of those that still have small crop corn in the bin or beans, uh, you know, I'm sure you're asking yourself, well, where do we go from here? Because all of the analysts out there are saying that new crop 15 corn could be at a lot lower value than what we saw for the 14 crop. And, and what do we do? Well, first and foremost, you know, you have to look at the basis appreciation that we've seen in the, in the marketplace. We have actually seen some carry out there as well that has went into price valuations. But as we get into planting season, that typically is where we see the uh, best basis that you're going to see for your old crop corn, unless you have a severe weather situation. So if you are holding old crop grain, uh, our advice to our customers and to the listeners out there is be ready to pull the trigger very soon. Because once we see those uh, planters running, that means attention is shifted away from selling physical grain and it's in the field that's the best time to be merchandising or marketing your grain. And it may not be the best price, but at least the best basis values are out there. And then you have to sit back and consider, well, you know, what if the market wants to appreciate higher? Well, if it does appreciate higher, that a lot of times will open the bins up, especially in the north where they have a large supply. So let's say the market goes to four and a half for the old crop values. And all of a sudden, any old crop corn that's out there comes to town, immediately what happens? The merchant pulls back on his basis values. So again, our bias to you would be to sell your physical grain. If you want to retain ownership on it, maybe thinking that there is a weather play sitting out there, buy some short-term calls, maybe some July, uh, you know, three eighty-four dollar calls, a much better alternative than to sit back and just hope that basis and price appreciate because most likely they don't occur at the same time. Most analysts feel like 15 may be uh, barely a break even year. That is, that is correct. And this is one of the years uh, that uh, we hope we don't have again for a very long time. Um, and in fact, it's been at least four or five years since we've even had thoughts that we could be farming in the red. Well, as we start 2015, that's exactly what we're looking at between uh, input cost and labor cost and machinery cost. You know, we are definitely deep in the red and several farming uh, operations out there. What do we do? Well, the biggest, you know, that is our biggest question. And the answer that, that we're providing to our customers is prepare yourself with a strategy that not only protects your risk, but also does give you upside. So that is a different from each individual operation based uh, upon your cash flow needs and based upon your on-farm storage capacities. But absolutely, there are some things you can be doing but you must be prepared. This year is definitely going to be a challenge. We're going to take a quick break and when we come back, we're going to talk to Chris about on-farm storage or non-on-farm storage. You're watching Kansas Ag Report. We'll see you in just a minute. This segment brought to you by Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center. Your stem cells, your health, your life. Farmers Insurance, your best protection against the unexpected. Call Agent Dan Key at 785-408- Five four five nine. Grass and grain, online or in the mail. Keeping Kansas farmers informed for over 60 years. Grassandgrain.com. Blue River Traders, the finest selection of Western style furniture for your home. Blue River Traders.com. Thanks for staying with us this morning, Chris. Thank you for staying with us. Uh, we're talking about getting planters into the field and uh, what to expect or uh, maybe some options you have coming into the fall with your old crop and possibly new crop. So, Chris, um, I don't have on-farm storage. Are my hands tied when I go to harvest? Well, you know, one of the things about having on-farm storage is it does provide you with a lot of flexibility at harvest. Obviously, you don't have to wait in line. Uh, you can get that crop out of the field much faster. You have the availability to sell to multiple you know, buyers out there. And those are all really good things. You, you put yourself in a driver's seat for negotiation. But what we really try to hone in with our customers is that if you're going to make the investment in physical on-farm storage, you need to start thinking like a merchant. So there are terms that you need to become familiar with and learn what those terms not only mean, but how they work in the marketplace. Uh, what am I referring to, but basis mm -hmm. 
and carry. Those are the two primary things that merchants focus on and you as the owner of a mini commercial facility need to, uh, again, not only be able to define what basis and carry are, but understand how they interact with the marketplace itself. And what I'm referring to is, let's say the corn market's at $8. If the market's at an extremely high level, a lot of times we won't see basis appreciating along the way. We'll actually see basis shrink. Meanwhile, when market values are at a much lower value, we a lot of times will see basis values increase. Then there's the term of carry. Carry is simply means how much is the market allowing us to get in rate of return today for selling in July or selling in December versus putting that market price on that crop for today's delivery. So again, these are terminologies that we really try to teach and define with our customer base. Um, so if you don't have on-farm storage though, does that mean your hands are tied? No, there's lots of alternatives out there to on-farm storage, but you do realize that you have a, a bit of a hurdle to overcome in your marketing plan on a given year. Ideally, you would have some flexibility on who you sell to, but some operations just don't have the manpower to be able to do that. And let's start, let's shift if we can real quick to wheat, because I know wheat's just getting beat up really, really bad. We're getting ready to go into harvest here in the next 60, 90 days. Yeah. What should we be thinking about? Yeah. The wheat market itself um, has, has a big uphill battle. We've only been feeding that market bearish news between carryout numbers from last year versus the world carryout values. It looks like now France and, and Europe are going to have a very good crop. Maybe not record, but a very good crop. And if we don't have weather problem here in the US, it looks like our prices are going to drift lower as well. So uh, ideally, we would have a weather problem, <laughs> at least a threat of one so that we can sell into it. Website real quick. www.myagadvisor.com. Check us out there. Perfect. Chris, thank you for your time. All right. Thanks, Brian.